brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel and the tradition of Luke. While Jesus was speaking, a woman called out from the crowd and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast that nursed you. Jesus replied, Indeed, but blessed are those who hear God's word and keep it. And this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Amen. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. So we gather this morning, and as always, thanking God we can be here. <coughs> and obviously you realize the reason for the color blue, because we're celebrating this event in the life of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the gospel we heard this morning is probably one of the shortest you're ever going to hear. <laughs> and it says so much. Right? Now, normally for the Feast of the Assumption, there is a vigil mass, which is the day before, such as Christmas Eve, the vigil of Christmas, okay? And the Mass for the, the, the Day of the Assumption is the reading from Luke in regards to Mary going out to visit her cousin Elizabeth, what we call the visitation. And that's an extremely long reading, okay? But this particular reading from Luke and probably we hear the most about Mary from Luke because what tradition tells us is that after the resurrection, which Luke did not witness, right, he was in conversation with Mary and she told him all these events in the life of Jesus that we find no place else. And as a mother, this woman was obviously very proud of her son. And one of the things that I think for a lot of people, and I'm talking about Joe, that the idea of the assumption, now this particular feast is through tradition. Okay? There's no place in scripture that talks about this. But through the tradition of the Catholic Church, of which we are, of which the Episcopal Church is, and the um, parts of the Lutheran Church, right? the tradition is that as the Pope Pius XII, I think it was in 1950, when this particular feast day was made doctrine, or the, part of the, the dogma of the Roman Catholic Church. What he said in the, uh, his writings for, the, for this particular feast day is when Mary's earthly existence stopped. Sounds nice, right? Yeah, sounds okay. But Mary died. Okay? This is part of humanity. And to say that Mary just fell asleep in the Lord, which hopefully we all will, takes away from Mary all of her human experiences, as far as I can tell. Okay? She said yes to the angel. Why? Because she was human and she had a free will. She was able to teach Jesus how to be a good Jewish boy who became a good Jewish man and who then becomes to do his work as the son of God. This is through the influence of his mother. And 
And scripture makes us think again through tradition that Mary was without sin completely. That she never had physical relationship with anybody, with her husband. Right? And the scripture tells us over and over again that Jesus and his sisters and brothers so to say that Jesus was an only child is a nice thing to say. But in, in first century Jerusalem, having one child was not considered to be what was normal. Okay? Now this is not taking away anything from Mary, the mother of God. Mother of God, okay? Not just mother of Jesus. And this is the whole point of the life of Mary within the church. Okay? Mary is the prime example for you and me. That she said yes to God without any question. Okay? And how many times do we say yes but? Huh? Think about it. She mentioned to the angel yeah, but I don't. But he reassured her, the Spirit will come upon you, and the Holy One to be born of you will be called the Blessed of God. Right? And she says, "Okay." And then she gives you and me the example of what it means to say that "Okay" to God. When she goes and she's got it, she hears that her. The angel told her, your cousin Elizabeth is six months pregnant. And she's like, this is astonishment. This is an old woman. And what does she do? She goes to visit her. The example for us, that we're supposed to be in community with each other, in communion with each other. So she, she puts herself on the line. And she travels to see her cousin Elizabeth. Nice, right? Yeah, wonderful. Example for us. Right? And then when, when she goes to visit Elizabeth, she gets a tremendous welcome. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child within you. Of course, the minute I heard your voice, the baby in me jumped for joy. Right? So she goes out of her way and she gets this tremendous gift of Elizabeth acknowledging Jesus within Mary and with John the Baptist within his mother, Elizabeth. And every time Mary comes up in the scriptures, it's always about concern for others. What do you feast of Cana? They have no wine. So, Jesus brought his buddies with him, and they probably the reason why there wasn't enough wine. <laughs> and what is what does Mary tell them? What does Mary tell us? Do whatever he tells you. And voila, what happens? The water is changed into wine. And then what happens? What the scripture says to us is the disciples saw his glory and they put their faith in him. Sounds good? Sounds like a plan? And then we got our direction. We got our direction that if we follow our ethic as Catholic Christians, and the time comes that we fall asleep in the Lord, we'll be welcomed with open arms. Pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace, now and always. Amen. You know, I make notes. Why I do it, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Anyway, thank you, God. And thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
for your love for us, for your support, and for being part of our 